أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بأبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير صدق الله صدق الله المران عظيم My dear brethren I have read to you the first verse of Surah Bani Israel, which is the 17th chapter of the Holy Quran. You may refer to this in the Holy Quran I mentioned once before, published by the Islamic, by the, uh, uh, the Islamic courts and affairs of your own city, Doha, Qatar, and this Quran is available from them. It's a translation, an encyclopedia of some 2,000 pages, which has a very comprehensive index. Now, in this index, you'll find details of the Mi'raj under M, or if somebody tells you that this is in the Surah Bani Israel, you look under B, Bani Israel, and it'll tell you that Bani Israel is chapter 17, and you can very, very readily, very easily check up and read for yourselves with the commentary that is given in it. Now, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this event which took place in the life of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Mi'raj, meaning the ascension, in which the Holy Prophet Muhammad was taken, according to the majority of the commentators, with whom I agree, that physically he was transported from the Masjid al-Haram, that is, the Masjid at Makkah, the holy mosque, the sacred mosque in Makkah. From there, he was transported to the farthest mosque, which was in Baytul Muqaddis, that is Jerusalem. And from there, he was transported into the spiritual realms physically. Now, the difficulty with uh, many Muslims about Miraj is whether it was spiritual or whether it was physical. No doubt, in Islamic tradition, uh, we read of a number of experiences that our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he had in what is called Asra or being taken up, Isra, Miraj. But this one in particular, the commentators say that it was physical. Now, what is the difficulty? The difficulty is for modern man, he says, now how can anybody be taken out into outer space and into the great beyonds, because we know that as we go higher and higher, there is lack of oxygen and uh, freezing. One would freeze to death. If we go to a place like, let's say, the moon, they say on the sunny side of the moon, where we see the bright brightness, where the sun is shining, it is so hot that the humankind, his body, his blood will boil in two minutes. On the shaded side, he will freeze in the same amount of time. So how can anybody be taken out of this environment into another environment and be brought back safe and sound? Well, giving some little thought to this, I find that there are so many things which to the layman is impossible to comprehend. For example, our own movement on Earth. We are told by learned men, science, men of science, geographers, astronomers, that we are at the present moment, I myself included, while seated here so comfortably, am being rotated, that this earth is rotating, and we, all of us on it, are rotating at a speed of a thousand miles an hour. The circumference of the earth being 24,000, and once in 24 hours we make one complete revolution. So we are traveling while seated comfortably at a thousand miles an hour in one direction, rotation, thousand miles an hour. Everything is being taken for a ride, thousand miles an hour. But this is one movement. There is another secondary movement that while the earth is rotating, the earth is going around the sun. And we are told that the speed at which it is moving around the sun in an elliptical orbit is 66,000 miles an hour, which goes round and round 
while rotating, going round and round, the sun in 365 and a quarter day, 365 and a quarter, 66,000 miles an hour in a forward direction and 1,000 miles an hour in a rotary motion. Now, if we tell this to the layman, that he is making two movements, one of 1,000 miles an hour and another at 66,000 miles an hour, he'll laugh at you. He will laugh at us. He says, look, man, what are you talking about? I can see I'm on terra firma, solid earth. How come that you are telling me that we are moving? And at such a, a stupendous speed, at 60 miles an hour in a motor car, at 100 miles an hour in a motor car, we know how uncomfortable we feel. And how is it that at that stupendous speed, no movement is perceptible even? So the answer is in this, that for God Almighty, He has protected us through this atmosphere, forces of gravity, and we are being taken around in comfort and in ease without even perceiving any movement. Live out 1,000 miles or 66,000 miles, no movement at all. We feel as if we are remaining fixed in space somewhere. And it is the sun that is going round and round and round. Whereas in actual fact, it is we who are going round and round and round. So if God Almighty can protect us in so easily, so comfortably, if he wants to transport his servant from place to place in a capsule of his making, what is impossible for him? He has the power to do what he wills. And today, we are having science fiction, and in science fiction, they are showing us, in my own country, there is a series of programs, they call them Star Trek, inventor, they were programmed in America, Star Trek, in which they show us that how spaceships are going around in the universe, and uh, that man is being uh, transported, he is being changed from one form into another, from one one uh, from the spaceship onto some planet and from the planet back to uh, the spaceship and uh, as if he's being disintegrated in front of your eyes and taken from place to place. Now, this idea that man can be transported, it is possible maybe in a hundred years time, or in a thousand years time, whatever the mind of man he has been able to conceive and perceive so far, he has been able to do. Ten years before the first man landed on the moon, Kennedy, he proclaimed to the American public that within the next ten years, we will land on the moon. And he did it. Then we have been talking about Mars and Jupiter probes, and they're making probes. They're going, they're sending the spaceships, they're sending the satellites, and they're coming back with information. So if man can do that today by knowing about what is in the heavens, if it is easy for him, we say, the Muslim, the man of faith, he says, if my Lord says that he can do something for his prophet, his chosen messenger, it is nothing difficult for him. So we believe, the Muslims as a whole, we believe in the ascensions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that Allah Bari Ta'ala took him up and the experience which he had. He gave us those experiences, he narrated them to us. And in this experience, one of the greatest gifts he brought for the Muslim was Salat. Salat became fard upon the Muslim. And we hear in Islamic tradition that from 50 times a day, gradually it was reduced to five times a day. And Salat has been described alternatively as as salatu mi'rajul mu'mineen, that Salat is the miraj, the ascension of the mu'min. So here is a blessing for us in this miraj, this event, which we can remind ourselves. And five times a day, every day of the year, we can communicate with the Lord and create that nearness, that awareness, that when we stand in His presence, we can stand, as the Prophet said, Ka'annakataraho, as if thou seest Him, that though you see Him not, He sees you. And this is the miraj of the Muslim. May Allah bari ta'ala make you and all, all of us, you know, benefit from this spiritual experience of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa akhirul da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen.